Act 1, Scene 4. Nurse and patient move on to the circle and walk down stage to the bench where the doctor first sat, which is to serve also as Alan's bed. Nurse. Well now, isn't this nice? You're lucky to be here, you know, rather than the ward. That ward's a noisy old place. Alan. Singing. Let's go where you wanna go, Texaco. Complimenting him. I hope you're not going to make a nuisance of yourself. You have a much better time of it here, you know, if you behave yourself. Fuck off! That's the bell there, the lab's down the corridor. She leaves him and goes back to her place. Alan lies down. Act 1, Scene 5. Dysart stands in the middle of the square and addresses the audience. He is agitated. Dysart. That night I had this very explicit dream. In it, I'm a chief priest in Homeric Greece. I'm wearing a wide gold mask, all noble and bearded, like the so-called mask of Agamemnon found in the Mycenae. I'm standing by a thick round stone holding a sharp knife. In fact, I'm officiating at some immensely important ritual sacrifice, on which depends the fate of crops or of a military expedition. The sacrifice is a herd of children, about 500 boys and girls. I can see them stretching away in a long queue, right across the plain of Argos. I know it's the Argos because of the red soil. On either side of me stand two assistant priests wearing masks as well. Lumpy, pop-eyed masks, such as also were found in Mycenae. They were enormously strong, these other priests, and absolutely tireless. As each child steps for forward, they grab from, from behind and throw it over the stone. And then, with surgical skill, which amazes even me, I fit in the knife and slice elegantly down to the navel, just like a seamstress following a pattern. I part the flaps, sever the inner tubes, yank them out and throw them hot and steaming onto the floor. The other two then study the pattern they make, as if they were reading hieroglyphics. It's obvious to me that I'm tops as cheap priest. It's this unique talent for carving that has got me where I am. The only thing is unknown to them. I start to feel distinctly nauseous, and with each victim it's getting worse. My face is going green behind the mask. Of course I redouble my efforts to look professional, cutting and snipping for all I'm worth, mainly because I know that if ever those two assistants so much as glance at my distress, and the implied doubt that this repetitive and smelly work is doing any social good at all, I will be next across the stone. And then, of course, the damn mask begins to slip. The priests both turn and look at it. It slips some more. They see the green sweat running down my face. Their gold pop eyes suddenly fill up with blood. They tear the knife out of my hand. And I wake up. <laughs>